Hello, folks, and welcome to the exciting training on the wide world of contact updates and address changes. This is actually really important, um, as dull as it may sound, and not only because we need to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information to get in touch with our clients and serve them the best we can, but also so that we can make sure that the proper government agency has their address whenever it changes so that they can get whatever notices, um, court hearings, decisions, approval notices, and cards that they may be getting. Um, so this is super important. And what I'm going to uh, explain to everybody in the firm, and this will be reiterated throughout time, is that everyone's job is to notify the designated background and FOIA person um, of any contact information change for a client. So that includes a receptionist, an attorney, um, an evidence specialist, a case manager, anybody who finds out that a client has changed their phone number, has moved to a new address or gotten a new email address that they're using, that person needs to notify you, the person who I presume is watching this training um, within one day. Within 24 hours, they need to let you know of the client's new information so that you can get started right away updating our databases and making sure that the government agency involved has the client's most recent information so that there are no gaps in communication. So once somebody else um, notifies you or even you find out about a, a client's change in information, you have a checklist of items that you need to complete. I'm going to share my screen here. And I'm going to bring up this checklist, which you can find in Dropbox under the Revis Group Dropbox um, under the how-to guides, and it's called the Checklist for Contact Changes. So this is your responsibility to complete once you get a notification that a client has an updated contact um, email, phone number, or new mailing address. So you'll put the client's name at the top. Uh, we're going to record when the client notified the office and the date that you were notified, which should be within 24 hours. And then you will note when you update the firm databases and when you update the proper U.S. government agency. These dates should be no more than five days after you're notified. You need to be updating the court within five days. So Moving down here for every client, regardless of whether they signed up yesterday or they have a pending case or they just got their green card, um, what you need to do is update our information. Okay, so first updating their My Case contact um, and then updating their QuickBooks contact as well. And then you're gonna note everything you do in the My Case time entries. And if the person is actually um, a pretty new client and we're in the process of preparing their submission packet, you wanna notify the case manager so that they can have their forms people update the forms with the new address um, and make any changes uh, regard, you know, regarding their case. So uh, you probably already know how to do this, but I'm gonna show you really quickly how to update the My Case contact. We're going to pop over here to My Case. We're gonna use um, this client as an example. So this is his case or his matter, but we're actually gonna to go to his contact here. Let's say that he got a new number, changed his address. You just go over to this blue button at the top right, edit. We're going to click on it. Now I can change his email address. I can go in and update his cell phone or change his um, street address. If he just moved to a different apartment within the same complex, I'll just you know, put that there. So it's that simple. Uh, for QuickBooks, you'll log into QuickBooks with your login, go to the client. Um, and then on this third tab here under client details, same thing. There's this edit button at the top right that you'll click on. And then you can go in, change the email, change the phone, um, change the billing address, which will automatically update the shipping address. Save it and done. It's that easy. So going back to the um, checklist, we've updated the My Case contact, we've updated the QuickBooks contact. Uh, we wanna make sure that we've put everything in time entry. So we're gonna come back over here to My Case, go back to their matter, time and billing and the time entries. We're going to add a time entry for your work. We'll put it as an update and say updated new mailing address. 
And we're going to put it in parentheses here. New address. Let's pretend I type it out there. From old address. Let's go ahead and put the old address here because sometimes we need to reference back and, and know well, well, what was their address at the, at, the, at the time before. Sometimes we need to put it on forms. Uh, so it's helpful to have it. So let's have both of these in the time entries. Uh, so same thing if it was a phone number, updated new phone number, 918-555-5555, old phone number, 918. 666-6666 as an example in my case and QuickBooks, okay? So now we've logged what we've done. We've got a timestamp for when we did it um, and you can put in your time here for however long it took you and then you'll click save, but I'm not gonna save this since it's just an example. Okay, and then let's say that this case is in the process of being prepared, like there's a VAWA um, application packet in progress, and um, let's say Whitney is the case manager, then I'm just going to come over here to communications and maybe send her, um, if I'm in a chat conversation with her, I can chat her, or maybe just send her a message and say, I'm going to say Whitney. Hey, address change. And then just explain briefly that, that the client has a new address. Uh, they moved there this week. And then the, the case manager will know, ah, okay, so now I need to update um, all of the client's addresses throughout the application packet. Okay. So now we've done everything. Updated the My Case contact, the QuickBooks contact. We've noted our changes in the time entries. And we've notified the case manager if that's applicable. So we're going to do that for every case, um, no matter what stage it's at, no matter um, what kind of case it is, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get that taken care of. Now, we also need to notify uh, the US government agency involved for some cases. So let's say we have a client who just signed up two weeks ago. Uh, we definitely want to do all of this um, under for every client uh, so that we can get in contact with them, but they don't actually have anything pending. Let's say that they, they're not an immigration court, they don't have any removal proceedings, um, and we're going to be filing a VAWA for them, but we haven't filed anything yet. We're just in the process of preparing the packet. They don't have anything on file with USCIS. We don't need to do um, any updates with USCIS because there's nothing to update. We're just going to make sure to give USCIS the most recent information when we send that packet. So if this is a new case and the client has nothing pending with the immigration court, with USCIS, we don't have to do anything else. But let's say that they do have something pending. Um, let's say that we have an I-130 um, that's pending for them or a VAWA that's already in process or a U visa that's been pending for a few years, but we're still waiting on an answer for it. So we need to update USCIS to make sure that USCIS sends all of their um, notices, documents um, to their updated address, not the old address. So what we need to file for a client who just has a case pending with USCIS is the form AR-11. So we're going to go back over here. Um, this is a, a form AR-11. I'm actually going to go back for a moment. Oh, so I just, you can just search it. That's what I do. I'll search the AR-11 and it's the first result here, alien change of address card. Okay, so this is the landing page. You can see there's a big button here where we can file it online, which is the easiest thing to do. So if we follow that button, there's some just general information about change of address, we're going to continue. And then here's this question. Have you filed an immigration related application or petition and have not yet received a decision, notice card or document? So that means it's currently pending. So let's say we have a pending um, I-130. We're going to say yes. Okay, and then we're going to fill this out for every form that the client has pending. We're going to put the form information there, an I-130, um, a U.S. citizen filing for um, a spouse, parent, or child, let's say under 21. We're going to type in the receipt number and use the zip code um, when, when uh, that was used when 
it was filed. So we can put in all of the forms that the client has currently pending and this will update all of those. We'll go down, put in the information that's requested. A lot of this is self-explanatory. We'll put in the old address. See, I had said that sometimes you need to put the old address on a form. We need to put the old address here and then the new address here. Um, and then we're going to say that it's filed by the legal representative and put in the information of the attorney who filed the G28. Okay. Um, so you'll fill all of this out, hit submit, and that's how you file a, a change of address with USCIS online. It's fast, it's easy, it's convenient. However, some cases you don't file online, you file by mailing. Um, so there's this handy page uh, by USCIS called how to change your address. It does tell you how to change your address, but what we want to focus on here is victims of domestic violence, trafficking, and other crimes. So there's a list. If you filed a form I-360, a form I-45 based on VAWA, T, or U status, uh, an I-765 related to VAWA, T, or U status, applications for T status, application for U status, or U visa, any of these forms, you have to update by mail um, by sending it to the Vermont Service Center. So um, if I, we actually go back to this landing page from the AR-11, we can get to the form that we can fill out and print. So I'm doing the same thing here, but instead of pushing file online, I'll just scroll down and I'm gonna click on this form. Okay, and this is the change of address card. It's just this one page. There's a second page, but it's just inform informational. This is the page, same information, um, you know, name, um, country of citizenship, date of birth, and then address information. And we'll have to get the client signature. And then we can put this in the mail to the Vermont Service Center. So it's important to notice what kind of case the client has. If it's VAWA, T visa, or U visa, we're going to need to mail the address change to the Vermont Service Center. Okay. So let's flip on back to our checklist here. So that's how you file a form AR-11, either online or by mailing it to the Vermont Service Center. So for a lot of um, cases, that's all you have to do. You've done the, um, the firm updates and then you've updated um, their case with USCIS. Done, we're good to go. But then for some clients, many of our clients have an immigration court case pending. And so they need to update the court um, with their address. So this is going to be more work. It's not hard. It's just more people that we have to notify, but it's very important that we notify them because clients do get um, notices of their court hearings to their address. And if they miss a hearing notice, they can miss a hearing and get ordered deported because they miss the hearing. It's really bad. We don't want it to happen. So we're going to make sure that we update the court. Okay, so now for clients with a pending immigration court case, um, we're also going to file an AR-11 with USCIS. Um, and when we looked at the AR-11 earlier, there was an option. Let's say somebody's just in immigration court. They haven't filed any forms at all. They're just, um, they have a pending case, right? We're going to file it online. I'm going to continue. Just want to make sure that, that USCIS also has um, the information. Um, that there, there are no forms involved. We're just going to hit no here instead. And then we can put in the same information. There's just not a place for a receipt number. But some immigration court clients do have forms as well that they've receipted in with USCIS. So let's say they're an asylum applicant and they submitted an I-589 to the court, but they also sent a copy to USCIS because USCIS is sort of this record keeper and the one that issues receipts. Um, so even though they're in immigration court proceedings, they're also gonna have a, um, you know, maybe a receipt or a biometrics notice from USCIS for that form. Um, so we can use that form receipt number in that case. Similarly, for a cancellation of removal case, like a 42B or a 42A, we're gonna file it with the immigration court, but we always send a copy to USCIS as well to get a receipt. So um, even for, for folks who have immigration court cases, 
They may also have receipt numbers that you can use in the AR-11. You'll just need to flip through their file or talk to the case manager or the um, removal case attorney who is familiar with their case and can tell you um, what's going on and if any forms have been filed, okay? So we need to file an AR-11. And then we need to file um, the notice of change of address with the immigration court so that they can get the notices sent to their correct address. So we're gonna prepare form EOIR 33. So similarly, we're just going to, here we go. I would just uh, search EOIR 33 on Google and it will take you to this landing page, form EOIR 33, immigration court listing. So it seems like there are a lot of different E33s, I call it an E33 for short, um, based on which immigration court the person is at. Uh, realistically, it doesn't matter what you use. We're gonna open one here. This front page is what we care about and this is always gonna be the same. The reason there's so many listings is because there's a second page and this document is made to be printed double-sided so that you can fill it out um, and then fold it up and tape it and mail it like this. We are not going to do that. We're going to send things to the court um, in an envelope. So uh, don't even worry about this page. We're not gonna use it. We're not gonna print it. You can click on any of those, um, any of those PDFs and use it because this is the only page we're worried about. Uh, it's again, a very simple one page form. We're gonna put the name, the alien registration number, their former address and phone number, current address and phone number, and then the client will sign here. Then we have this proof of service, which confuses a lot of people. What this is, is everything we send to the court that we file officially with the court in a client's case, we have to send to ICE, which is the opposing side. They have to get a copy of everything we file with the court and we have to get a copy of everything they file with the court. Um, you can't be filing things secretly with the court and the other side not knowing about it. So um, the proof of service is us saying, yes, I filed the, a copy of this with ICE because I'm gonna send the original of this form to the court, but I'm gonna take a copy or a scan and I have to send the scan to ICE. So this will usually be the attorney of record. I usually Lorena and maybe Elissa, you know, Elissa Styles mailed or delivered a copy of this form on, and this will be the date that we actually send it to the Office of Chief Counsel for DHS. So this is the ICE location. Usually wherever there's an immigration court, there's an ICE court in the same or a very close city. Um, you'll get to know this uh, off the top of your head. I have the um, Dallas ICE address memorized because I use it so much. Um, if you're not sure about this, you can look it up or you can ask uh, the removal attorney which address we need to put here. But this is the address for ICE, not the address for the court. This is the address for ICE, okay? And then get the signature of the attorney of record. So this is easy to fill out, it's quick, but you're gonna have to get some signatures. And then we're going to mail this originally filled out one to the court. And you may be wondering, well, how do I figure out which immigration court? Because as we saw on the other page, there are a lot of immigration courts throughout the country. Most of our clients are at the Dallas Immigration Court. The vast majority of them are with Dallas, but you can't assume that. Some of them are with Kansas City or El Paso or um, Harlingen. Um, there are lots of courts around the country and not all of them are at Dallas. So I'm gonna show you how to look it up without even having to ask an attorney. You go to my case and we're working to get all of the A numbers or alien registration numbers put into my case you should be able to find them under the case, under items and info and info. This is the landing page when you first go to a case. If you scroll down just a bit, here we are, we have the A number. So I'm gonna copy this A number and uh, I'm actually gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna search for the EOIR portal, okay? And I'm gonna go to automated case information. All right, so this took me straight there to the automated case information. And all I need is the person's A number to find out what court they're at and when their next hearing is. It's super easy. So I'm gonna, I copied, I'm gonna paste um, our client's A number and hit submit. Here we go. So I know that his next hearing is August 19th, 2022. 
It's going to be with this judge and importantly for your purpose, this is the court's address and this is the court contact information. So here is the court's address. That is exactly where you're going to send the E33. You're going to mail it right to this address. Okay. Um, so that is how you can just look it up for every single case and make sure you're sending it to the correct address. Let's go back over to the checklist. Okay, so we filed the AR-11. We've already gone over how we do that. We've prepared the E-33 for the client to sign, gotten the signatures. We filled it out, gotten the attorney's signature. We mailed it to the correct immigration court and we checked where the immigration court was. So we know that's right. The final thing to do is we've got to serve ICE, right? We've got to send a copy to ICE, like I said. And at this time, um, attorneys have an e-filing system where they can just upload scans of, um, cop of documents that we file with the court and um, electronically serve ICE that way. So you can have the removal attorney um, or their designee, um, if they end up designating somebody else to do this, um, you can have them e-file a scan of that E33, um, and that's how we can send it to ICE. So we don't actually have to mail it. While we're going to mail the E33 to the court, um, we can electronically serve ICE. Okay, and that is the end of the list. I know that seems like a lot, um, but you have this handy dandy list to help you keep track. And for some clients, these things are not going to be applicable. If they're a new client and nothing's pending, We'll just stop after here. If they are a client with just a USCIS case pending, you'll only do this. Um, if they have an immigration court, it's going to be a little bit more work. Um, but now you know how to do it. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to ask me or uh, any of the other staff members, and we'll be happy to help you. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is that we want to make sure that we send a, uh, an address update for each applicant. So um, this is particularly true of an immigration court case. Let's say we have a primary client who's a mother and she has three daughters and they're all in immigration court. They all have an A number. Um, they're they're going to have their court hearings on the same day um, and their cases are consolidated, but nevertheless, they're all in immigration court proceedings. We don't just update the mother's information. We also update all of the daughter's information um, with USCIS and the court as well uh, to make sure that each of their files um, with the agencies has this updated information in case there's ever an issue or ever a question. Okay, that should pretty much be it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And so if anyone has questions, come to me, come to the removal attorney or any attorney and they can help you with it. Thanks for watching.